today we'll take up the issue of uh, inequality and poverty. This is one of the most important issues in economics and especially in the context of economic development we really need to study this issue seriously. Uh, first, inequality. The typical measurement of inequality is this uh, Gini coefficient, which goes as follows. When you measure people uh, from the poor to the rich along the horizontal axis, and their total income or cumulative income along the vertical axis, you can see the relation between these two variables. For example, if all the people have the same income, the relationship is this uh, straight line. Because, say, first person has $100, second person has the same $100, so total income is $200 for those two people. Third person has the same income, $100, so the total income of those three people are three hundred dollars so it's proportional when you increase the number of people to count the total cumulative income will be increasing proportionately so that's the case of uh, total equality the other extreme is the uh, maximal inequality where only one person has all the income like uh, a king versus uh, slaves. Uh, so if you count all those poor people with no income, total income is zero. And this last person, the richest person, has all the income suddenly. So it will look like that. That's the case of maximal inequality. Uh, so in this... Uh, total equality case, we have the Gini coefficient, which is equal to zero. And uh, in the case of maximal inequality, we have the Gini coefficient, which is equal to one. So uh, in reality, the Gini coefficient is somewhere in between, between zero and one. Um, as you can guess, uh, developing economies tend to have a relatively high value of Gini coefficient, which is closer to one like this. Uh, whereas the developed economies tend to have more or you know equal income distribution, so the Gini coefficient is closer to zero like this. But how about the historical trends? Um, inequality in economic development. Uh, here is the uh, well-known Kuznets curve, which says as follows. Uh, here is the uh, Gini coefficient to measure the degree of inequality. Uh, and here is a per capita income. So as the economy develops, per capita income tends to increase. And initially, the degree of inequality will rise. So Gini coefficient will increase up to the point. And here, at some level of per capita income, this curve will start declining. In other words, inequality starts to decline. So the, many of the developing economies are somewhere here. That's why Gini coefficient is relatively high. Whereas the developed economies, having a very high per capita income, tend to have a low value of Gini coefficient. Um, however, uh, lately, say for the last uh, couple of decades, the, even among uh, developed economies, inequality has been rising. So the, it could be like this. We will discuss this uh, in detail in class. 
the um, next uh, we'll focus on the poverty there are two ways of measuring poverty one is the relative poverty uh, for a given country you always have relatively poor people how to measure poverty in that context now, uh, normally, the relative poverty or relative poverty rate is the percentage of people with income less than about half of medium income. So, I'll explain medium income shortly. Uh, some cases, this may not be one half. Uh, it's uh, slightly about I have a certain fixed number or, or fraction of medium income. That's relative poverty. Yeah. I'll give you some example. Suppose in economy, here is the income level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. And here is the number of people in that income. Uh, know, category. Uh, income one, three people. Income two, two people. Income three, one. Income four, one. Income five, three. Income six, one. In that case, median income is three. Because the definition of median income is such that the uh, half of the population uh, will have uh, income level less than that and remaining half more than that. So here 3 plus 2. 5 people have income level less than 3 and the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 people uh, have income greater than 3. So here is the median income. Okay. And the, in this example the uh, half of median income is 1.5 so income 1 is less than that so 3 people are in relative poverty in this example and there are a total of 11 people here so relative poverty rate is number of poor, relatively poor people 3 divided by total population 11 so it's about 27% which is very high, but that's around the number uh, <clears throat> typical you know, percentage for developed economies. Among developed economies, this number is about half, 10% or 15% at most. But well, that's relative poverty. But that's not terribly interesting uh, because, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, relatively poor people in a very rich country are not really poor relative to the uh, average people in a very poor country. So the more meaningful measurement is the absolute poverty or, or the extreme poverty. That is the percentage of people with income less than one Point two five dollars per day, one dollar twenty five cents a day. Uh, in real terms, this should be in real terms. Otherwise, uh, U.S. data could be very, you know, valuable uh, in uh, some of the developing economies, depending on the exchange rates and the uh, you know price levels. So in the United States, around $0.25 cents would buy you, uh, say, uh, a hamburger. Just uh, one hamburger a day for the whole family. Okay, that's, that's really poor. So that is called the uh, purchasing power parity terms or real terms. Now, how many people are in this kind of extreme poverty in the world? Well, uh, 
there's some good news and bad news. Household property rate has been declining rather sharply for the last uh, few decades. Back in 1981, more than half of the world population were in this extreme poverty. Okay. Now it's been declining to 22.4%. That's a tremendous progress in dealing with uh, extreme poverty for the last uh, three to four decades. But bad news is still 22.4% of world population are in this extreme poverty. Right now in the world, there are about you know, seven to eight billion people. So close to two billion people are in this extreme poverty. That's, that's horrible. That's something we really have to address in the economic development uh, studies.